Hi, this is Christina Rogers. This week on the show, we've got Byron Bartlett, and we've got Joe Hoyt from the Atlantic Open Wheel, and Tyler Young as well. So, gentlemen, start your engines. This is Too Close to Call. Well, it is Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and thank you to you guys for being here tonight. Let's uh, go around and introduce everyone to you. Byron Bartlett from the Atlantic Open Wheel, one of the drivers here. Joe Hoyt, who is president of the Atlantic Open Wheel, as well as one of the drivers. And Tyler Young, a little hockey expert here. Good <laughs> to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show today. Well, thanks really for having that. us, Christina. No problem. All right, well, let's, let's start out. Talk hockey here, Tyler. Now, you've, we're in the playoffs here with the Sea Dogs. We've seen all the games. We know. What are your thoughts so far? Well, I'm pretty impressed so far, actually. Uh, I don't think the Sea Dogs expected to win the first six games. They don't have much playoff experience with the team. I know it's a lot of the fir first time for a lot of the guys in the playoffs, so I've really been surprised with the start. I mean, they're going to face some adversity here soon enough, so it's, it's a great start for them, though. I couldn't be happier. Couldn't agree more with you. I mean, we only have three players who have playoff experience on our team, so, I mean, that's a lot. And us being the only other team, as well as Rhea Naranda, being the only undefeated team so far. So, I mean, that's very impressive. Now, thoughts on Friday night's game. I think, really, Bathurst probably should have won that game. If it came down to who was playing more like they wanted to win, I think it was Bathurst. But Saturday night game... Definitely. If they keep playing hockey like that, they're definitely going to win games. Yeah, they almost blew Friday night's game, but uh, Dina Menico took a really dumb penalty with about 38 seconds left in the game, and uh, they pulled their goalie and went six on four, so that's not exactly how you want to finish the game, not on a good note. But they came out on fire. I mean, it was a sellout. They sold, I think, 250 standing room tickets on uh, Saturday night's game, so they had 6,500 people at Harbor Station. It was pretty loud. Uh, it, was, it was a good crowd. Absolutely, and I think people underestimate the power of a crowd. I mean, you guys can probably attest to this as well. I mean, the more people sure. there are watching you, the more fired up you are that, you know, you really want to yeah. race to win or play to win. I mean, do you think that contributed all to the... Big the hometown win. crowd, though, if you have a lot of support, it does give you that extra Appreciate edge for it. sure. It gives you the boost. Big I ten. couldn't agree with you more. The Sea Dogs, you know, even in hockey, though, they get the last change at home. They can get their matchups. It's going to be a lot harder when they go on the road because the ball isn't going to be in their court as much. Bathurst will have last change so they can get their line matchups out there. So it, it's going to be a little tougher on them for these next two games up north there. Absolutely. And fans, I mean, they had a busload come down from Bathurst, and a little crazy they were. And, I mean, mm. all of Bathurst is like that. If you, I mean, I'm sure you've probably taken in a game or two in Bathurst yourself, and you've seen there. They're pretty I can intense. imagine our busloads that will be going up for the games will be just as crazy. You can hope so, <laughs> at least, that they'll be a little crazy there representing St. John and the Sea Dogs. I'm, the last game of the year in Halifax, it was a nothing-nothing game. Like, the score wasn't, but it meant nothing in the standings. And two, three busloads of people drove all the way down to Halifax to see their last regular season game. So Absolutely. Let's hope we get a good Sea Dogs turnout up in Bathurst. Very impressive. The fan support in St. John is incredible, and that does mm. definitely contribute a lot. I mean, Kevin Charlon said that last night after his big, big old hat trick. I mean, that's... But you have to say, too, it has to do with the product on the ice. That's right. The first couple of years the team was here, they only had 15 wins, and the crowds weren't there. And then the second year, it took the third year this year for them to finally... Get the big sellouts, so and they've had a couple sellouts lately. So you know the product is definitely uh, showing in the uh, box office there with the ticket sales. That's for sure. No, absolutely, no doubt. Now let's talk about some standout players. I mean, Michael Kirkpatrick definitely stood out in my mind last mm -hmm. night and Friday night as one of the stars of the game. I mean, he was on parole, like you know. Yeah, it's nice for their third line because that's their checking line. So you don't expect to get the offense out of that line and. They're checking the top unit for Bathurst, and when they can chip in Lisk and Kirkpatrick's line, that's uh, that's a bonus, you know, because, I mean, you've got Howes. He's got a goal in all six games so far, so you expect that out of your top line guys, but you don't expect to get that out of your third line. And, and the goal scoring has been plenty in the playoffs. I think we scored Absolutely. 29 in the first four games against PEI, and then we've had... Uh, you know, lots of goals against Bathurst, so Absolutely. as long as we can keep them out of our net, we should be all right. Absolutely. And I mean, Pro is the hot ticket in the queue right now. I mean, having just signed just with signed Capitals. Just signed Washington, yeah. I mean, that's huge. Uh, and to have Michael Kirkpatrick shut down as many scoring opportunities as he did on Pro, I mean, that's very impressive. He won the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League scoring race this year, and uh, 
he won the MVP last year as a 19-year-old, so uh, you know he could, he's definitely one of the top products in this. He he was an invitee to the World Junior Camp, you know he got uh, got cut from the team, but I mean, you know I think maybe you know if uh, Bathurst gets eliminated, he might play in the AHL. You know uh, Washington's in the playoffs. Who knows? Maybe he'll get a call up. Definitely. And Francois Goche, I mean, this kid is definitely on fire. I mean, I can remember at the beginning of the season, people were questioning, how is he even on the team? Like, were we really going to take him? But, I mean, he's definitely stepped up and shown yeah, that. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a one heck of a player. He's uh, really good. I, th I think they got a lot of guys that are going to be drafted. Right now, they've only got two, but there are some guys that uh, could hear their names in the upcoming NHL drafts, maybe, to, uh, to bigger and better things for these young guys. I mean, Jacques done a great job with the team. The, Head Absolutely. coach and general manager since he's been here, he's brought all the guys in from uh, various other leagues and with other trades and other signings. So this is true. And yeah. having not made any trades in the trading period at Christmas time, he definitely instilled the confidence that that was the team he wanted to go with, and that's where he was going with it. So definitely a boost for the players. Now, if you guys have, if there have any comments, anything you'd like to say about uh, Sea Dogs or anything in general, give us a call one eight six six two five seven five zero three seven. That's one eight six six two five Five seven five zero three seven. Feel free to give us a call. Throw us in Matt Tyler. I'm sure he'll uh, <laughs> sure he's got his hockey expertise and he can weigh in on it as well. And as well, if you have any questions for uh, Byron and Joe about uh, the AOW racing, by all means, give us a call as well. All right. So, you think? What do you think? Going to take it two and two on uh, in the, over the next couple of games? Yeah, I think we'll lose at least one up in Bathurst. You know, uh, I guess Fullerton. He was first star in Friday's game, and he certainly stood on his head in last night's Absolutely. game. He's made some crazy saves. Jacques gave either one of those two goalies, him or Meyer, a chance to run with it, and uh, neither of them really took it in the regular season. But in the playoffs, Tra Travis Fullerton 6-0, and and uh, he's a 20-year-old, so this is his last year in the league. So uh, yeah. he looks like he's going to be the one to go with the rest of the playoffs, uh, pending us getting blown out in the game. Maybe he might get pulled, maybe for one game, but... I can't see, uh, I don't see Bathurst taking the series. When you go down 2 nothing, that's a big blow and a best of seven. You lose the first two games. They have to win four to six now. That, that, that becomes really tough. It's a little tough. I imagine the bus ride home to Bathurst last night was a quiet yeah, one, that's I for sure. Yeah, I imagine the only guy talking would have been Ron Schulz, their head coach. And uh, <laughs> he probably didn't have a whole lot of nice things to say to his players, that's for sure. Probably not I a picture imagine. of them putting all the iPods in, going, not yeah. listening, not listening. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah no, uh, I mean, it's, it's tough to come off of that. I mean, they had a rough go with, uh, with uh, the Fog Devils as well. And, I mean, and Bathurst was the hottest team in the queue coming into the playoffs. They... They had co changed coaches partway through the year and brought Schulz aboard, true. and uh, he turned, turned the team around, team around, and they were just putting goal after goal. They had seven 20 goal scores, four guys with 40. You know, their top two lines, all six players have 20 goals, and they have a defenseman, so they can put the puck in the net, and the, the Sea Dogs look like they're doing a good job from keeping them from doing it. Oh, absolutely, and I mean, goaltending, I mean, you mentioned Travis Fullerton, absolutely on fire with his goaltending in the last couple of games he's played, but in the playoffs, he's been a very, very key factor in... Oh, he certainly has been, and like you say, goaltending, Bathurst pulled their goalie last night, and uh, he just wasn't in the game, Fullerton's been amazing. He's, he's been excellent in the playoffs for them. He's definitely the Sea Dogs number one star and the reason why they've certainly won the first six games in the playoffs that's, that's for sure. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see what happens next season when we don't have Fullerton anymore. Yeah, but well everyone says they say the fourth year was supposed to be our big year like everything that happens this year is just kind of money in the bank because the fourth year with an expansion franchise they say that's really your big year of when you're supposed to have a good year and Picard House and Fullerton, three of our better players are all moving on because they're 20, 20 year olds. But uh, good for them, you know. They uh, hopefully they move on to bigger and better things. I know. I went to the Sea Dogs banquet, and Jock mentioned there were five or six NHL teams looking at House. He had 40 goals this year for the Sea Dogs. So. I mean, good luck to him. I hope he gets a contract and uh, jumps on with somebody. Well, best of luck to him in the new season. Now, speaking of new seasons, it's almost race season, isn't it, gentlemen? It's just about. Just we can about. We rid of the last snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably can't wait to fire up the engines and get a spin around that track. That's for sure. It's been a long winter. All right. Now, you guys are with the Atlantic Open Wheel. Now, I know, Byron, you've been around racetracks in many different types of cars. I've been around the track. You've been around the track, around track quite a few times. This is true. Now, Joe, is it mainly open wheel for you? That's mainly where I actually started in Enduro, ran started three years Enduro. up there. Okay, yep. perfect. Why don't you explain a little bit about the Enduro and, uh, oh. and the open wheel? The Enduro, that's kind of...